Hey guys, what's going on? Eric on here, and today I'm going to do another five items, and I'm just going to jump straight into it, so enjoy. Number one, Bob Snell Shell. Bob Snell dates back to 2009, June 2009, so it's the same patch that Soaks came out, and basically there's tons of player-created stories about him, and he spawned an ant tunnel. And something that was odd about him is that he's faster than a normal snail. I'm better. I'm stronger. I'm Batman. And level two, even though the ant tunnel map was really high level required in order to get in there, otherwise everything would one shot you. Um, yeah, when you kill him, he spawns eleven snails, just eleven normal snails, and just around a bunch of cold eyes and other. I uh, think cargoes spawn in that map. Yeah, cargoes definitely spawn in that map. Um, and it's just really out of place, but even though it got added in mid-2009, the map got removed in late 2010 when, you know what, Big Bang hit. Big Bang changed everything. Just, it rocked everything. Um, so that map got removed, you can't go there anymore, you can't get the snail shell, although in the old Maple events that came back, there were two of them, one was... I don't even remember where they were. You can probably Google that and figure it out. But in the old Maple events, I'm not sure about the first one, but the second one, it brought back Ant Tunnel, and Bob the Snail actually spawned in the map, and you could get his snail shell. Um, so it kind of ruined the rarity behind it, but it was really cool and definitely nostalgic. The snail shell actually was used in a quest for Jay and Henesis, and all it did was give you your fame, so it's pretty pointless. I would not have given her my snail shell. I don't know if she actually took it or not. Some quests take stuff, some don't. But it's definitely not worth just giving it to her. Even though he's not that rare. There's about a 12 hour spawn delay, according to sources. I'm not sure, I think that's per channel. Yeah, it has to be per channel. Everything's per channel. Um, so, it's not too bad. Yeah, one of the many lures that came with Bob the Snail was that you'd pass every scroll that you used after killing him, and that was definitely <laughs> false and disproved and because he was all the way down in ant tunnel where it was really hard to get into not very many people could get there because big bang before big bang it was very hard and the mobs in that map let me see what level were cargoes the cargoes are level 62 and getting to level 30 pre big bang was pretty hard so any old players will probably remember bob the snail um new players know because there's no reference to it and it's been removed for a long time, but it definitely has a place in old players' hearts, so I thought it was something I should definitely cover on this list. Number 2! Mind of Maple Necklace. Mind of Maple Necklaces came out in an event in late 2012, and basically, you got one of the pieces which expired from Cody, or, yeah, Cody. Um, he gave it to you, and then you had to gotch to get other pieces, and then you talked to Stan, and then he'd give you another piece, and you put those two together, and then voila, you've got a clean necklace. And then what you did with the necklace is you got those gem heart stone thingamajigs, and then you put those into the necklace, and it gave you a better necklace. And basically, <clears throat> they started out as untradeable, and then they could be soaked along the way, and then they became fully tradable when they were done being upgraded. There are level 10 and 70 versions. Um, 15 attack is about the best you can get. I remember seeing them all around. I actually almost bought one of the gems, but I think someone wanted a few bill for it, which was ridiculous, so I passed that up. Um, but they're pretty old, the necklace pieces and the gems nowadays. So, And I don't think Nexon will ever bring it back, because nobody's going to want to buy gosh tickets for that, because it's outdated now. Because they're only level 10 and 70, there's no real potential behind it, but it's basically just for a little bit of stats, just rarity. There's not much else to it. Number 3. Dragonlord Necklace. The Dragonlord Necklace came with a bunch of other stuff, um, mostly just scrolls. Actually, it's not mostly scrolls, only two of them are scrolls. That's aside the point. It came in a gotcha event in 2010. And what you had to do was, surprisingly, it's definitely not surprisingly, you had to gotch, and you got these chocolates, 
And what these chocolates did was when you got nine of them, you could trade them in and spawn the Dragon Lord, which was basically just Pink Bean. <laughs> just like a dragon. So it's a little bit weird, but whatever. And it summoned like six or something like that boxes. And you got to pick one of them if you summoned it. And there's a chance of getting a necklace, a chance of getting ruby, sapphire. I'm not sure. I think, the, yeah, the chair had to have come from it too. Um, and so basically you got to pick one, get that item, and then see what else you didn't get. Basically just like Marvel where it's like spinning around and there's a tyrant right before it or LGR right before it. Just that way you feel like you almost got it, but you didn't. Although in here, it's actually that chance of getting it. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's not the easiest thing to get. Um, it's pretty old, and I unfortunately only have two of the chocolates from back then. Never did much gotching, stuff like that, so I had pretty much no chance. But I still keep mine, just because the memories, man. The memories. But I think it's pretty nifty. And the pendant can actually get pretty good stats if you use a bunch of rubies on it. Because they're each 6 attack. So, I mean, 6 attack and then you can have 3 slots. That's 18 attack. So, it's pretty nice. I I'm not sure if you can hammer them. I would assume you can. And since it's all job. Or not all, well, yeah, it's all job. But since it's tradable and level 120. If you get drop rate on that. It's a pretty nice pendant. 18 attack. 20% drop. That's what I would do with mine if I got one. I'm actually trying to find one. Um, I'm not sure about the gift. Oh, never mind. The gift box is what summons. <laughs> I guess it's an item. I, I guess that's how they made it. <laughs> that would make a little bit more sense. And I'm not sure about the blessing. That's probably just from summoning it. So yeah, the dragon one is pretty cool. Uh, I don't know when the event ended. I think it was just a month or two of gotching. Maybe even just one month. They're pretty hard to find nowadays. Then again, almost everything that's old is. So it's not much different. All those zombie rings. There are tons of those, even though they're pretty old. So I don't know what's up with that. At one point, however, in late 2013, actually November 2013, an exploit came out in version 142.2, and people found a way to spawn the Dragon Lord, even though this was long after the event, and it would give level 130 equips and Dragon Lord equips. And so basically the market got flooded with a bunch of that stuff. People thought there was going to be a rollback. Um, there wasn't a rollback, um, but that got a lot more out there. I'm so surprised that next one didn't roll back or remove items from that gotch mispricing. Way too many things just got added. Although I'm not going to say that gotch really messed up the economy because it didn't, but I still think that's a bit messed up. Number four. Snail's Eye. Snail's Eye, it actually has no origin. It is not out in any version. It is just something that's in the code that's been around. I thought it was a little neat. Um, it looks cool. I wish I had one. But yeah, those don't exist. There's a lot of earrings and other accessories that just don't exist or that have been out for a small amount of time. Um, like wiser than thou in any way. So yeah, I don't know anything else to say about this. Number 5. Battle Arena Items. Battle Arena Items consist of many different types of items. In the summer of 2011, the Chaos Update hit, which brought three parts, Age of Artisans, Age of Battle, and Ice Knight. Ice Knight was sort of like, I don't know, it wasn't like the other ones, it was just extra content and events. Um, but they came out a week after each other, and the first one was the crafting system, which has been changed many times since, but that was the very first crafting system and when Ardent Mill came out on July 20th, 2011, and then PvP, PvP came out a week after that with just Free For All and Team, and then Ice Knight came out either a week or a few weeks after that, um, and then Capture the Flag came much later. What you can see in this picture is there is a 1.5 times point event going on, and this is during the original PvP because it has rookie, gladiator, veteran, and legend rankings. And so basically, it's just to organize people based on level and um, how good they are 
at PvP. The level basically changed what skills you were able to use. So if you're in Major, you could use all skills. Legends, also all skills, although potentials were cancelled, um, which doesn't really make much of a difference besides health and stuff like that. Although I think you had a set health. No, yeah, you, you definitely had a set health. Anyway. Um, so some of the items that came from the shop were theory battle manuals, um, practice battle manuals, which were both great items at the time, but they were very expensive. Um, so as you see, they are 50 and 100 coins, and getting a single coin was pretty hard. Trading in for coins was a little bit odd because you could trade in 500 battle points and get 1, or 1500 and get 4, or 2500 and get 7. So the more you put in at one time, the better you got. And so um, each round, let's say you got 1000 points, um, you got 100 battle points. So it's divided by 10. Um, so it took a long time to be able to buy stuff like the whole Larson set, which I actually was able to get, um, cost quite a bit, it took a lot of farming. And battle pouches have a chance of giving chaos items, like you see here, chaos peacemaker and chaos dark gun. Did I really just say that? <laughs> dark gigantic. I was going Italian mode right there, and I actually almost got a chaos froze frozen fair. I think it's called yeah frozen fair, but I wasn't able to actually buy that. Um, and then there's a whole list, of tons of other chaos ones out there. So you traded in battle points with that um, vending machine right there, and they added rewards like ice net earrings and chain crampons, and basically you got those for doing it a certain amount of times. I wasn't a huge fan of ice night. I did tons of free for all though. And then I forget how long later, probably a month later, they added capture the flag. Maybe it was more than a month. I don't know, but they added capture the flag. And capture the flag was actually pretty fun. And Ironically, the berets in Capture the Flag got added into the game later um, as actual hats, and they have other colors. They have black, beige, um, I think that's actually it, <laughs> besides red and blue. There might be another color, I don't know. I have a ton of them. I just bought tons of them because I like the look of them, and I just put them all over the place. And there's also sets, so besides the Larson set, giving Battle Lord Attack, which you can see there, um, Elagos, which is just the mage version of the battle set, gave battle attack too. So, um, same as having multiple in that set. So if you had the full battle attack set for your job and the full Larson set, actually Rising Sun was better, which is another battle attack gear, which you could also get from the shop if you used recipes, which they started selling in a later date in the shop. And so if you got battle attack, that was that high, you could pretty much just one hit KO and just dominate and rack in even more points and just sell stuff for tons of money. It was a little bit uh, cheap. Although, closer to the middle of 2012, Nexon decided to remove PvP actually and revamp it. And it came back a while later, but it came back unbalanced as can be because they decided to go based off damage at that time instead of battle attack. Um, so everyone with battle attack was just screwed over, and everyone with damage was just poning people, like Proxied and Vera, I think was capping at the time, I don't remember, but he pretty much got one shot with one of his stars, and so, um, yeah, it, it was just unbalanced <laughs> with godly people just wrecking everyone. Actually, in the old PvP, you could glitch decent skills by putting it on outside, going inside, um, and then taking it off, and then... Once you got kicked out, then you just trade it back to the person, and then voila, you keep it permanently. Uh, it eventually got patched, so I was surprised how long it took for it to get patched, and I actually think I got Hyper Body and Sharp Eyes from someone by doing that. <laughs> I don't remember. I think I also got Dora for the heck of it, because why not? Thanks again so much for watching. It went on a little bit longer than usual this time, but um, oh well, more content. Anyway. As always, I will see you guys later. Peace.